Are you someone who experiences withdrawing in relationships when you feel triggered or upset, or even if you feel like something is not going right in the relationship, perhaps you have a need that's unmet and you don't know how to vocalize it. And so you feel kind of upset or sad or let down and just withdraw instead. Well, if this sounds like you, we are going to cover five major reasons that this might be happening in your romantic relationships in this video today. And this will help you have a massive change here if this is something that you're stuck on by having the insight and awareness to want to change the pattern. So reason number one that this most frequently happens is because you might be an avoidant attachment style. If you are not already familiar with different attachment styles, basically our attachment style is like our love style. It's the ways in which we give and receive love in relationships based on what was taught to us as children. Like the way we are programmed and the different habits we picked up on from our childhood environment has a massive impact on our adult relationships, including romantic friendship, workplace relationships, and even family relationships going forward. Now, avoidant attachment cells generally have some kind of lack of having their needs met in childhood. And so they tend to assume that their, no their needs will not be met in their adult lives. And this can look like them withdrawing because they assume their needs won't be met. This can look like them feeling frustrated and not knowing how to deal with conflict because they don't have proper modeling. And I'm actually going to take you through for anybody who might be newer to this, a little slide here, just to really lay this all out. So when you take a look and you see these different dynamics here, um, the first major thing that you'll see is that when we have a lack of proper modeling in our adult lives for how to work through conflict, how to communicate about challenges, how to have proper healthy conversations, then we just assume that there's no way out of a potential conflict. So rather than feeling upset, for example, in a romantic relationship because somebody didn't call you back and then having a discussion with that person and saying something like, hey, you know, consistency is really important to me in relationships. And I know we all make mistakes sometimes, but if you can try to be mindful about following through when you commit to something, that would really go a long way for me. Rather than having a discussion like that, if you didn't ever see proper modeling for how to move through discussions, then all that happens is you just go into your avoidance side. You just go, okay, I'm going to shut down. I don't know how to deal with this. I feel frustrated and I have to protect by withdrawing. So this is reason number one. Reason number two, and by the way, this whole channel is all about attachment styles. If you want to learn more about what your love or attachment style is, um, we also have a quiz link down below. Reason number two is that you may find yourself feeling vulnerable if you share your inner world. So let's say you were to share a feeling that you're having or share, you know, an insecurity that you're having or a fear that you have in a relationship or a need that you have even. If you were to share any of those things, you may have this assumed response that says something like, oh, I'm going to be weak if I do that. Or, you know, that's too vulnerable for me. I, can't, I don't do things like that. And there's this natural cutting off of being able to actually articulate what's going on in your inner world and this need to preserve your inner world and not open up or share with other people about it. And I want you to know that if this is something that you're doing, it will always stunt your growth in romantic relationships. Secure and lasting relationships naturally involve you being able to share your inner world with somebody else and vice versa. And that's the healthy development of the relationship life cycle. If we're not doing that, we're actually going to see a lot of challenges show up as we get closer and closer to somebody in a relationship, because this is where we feel like, hey, why doesn't this person understand me? What's Why aren't they meeting my needs? You know, why are they pushing my buttons? And if somebody doesn't know what your buttons are and understand them deeply because you've never shared that with them, or they don't know what your needs are because you've never shared that with them, it minimizes the capacity that you have to feel fulfilled in a relationship. So it's really important to pay attention to that. By the way, as I go through the next three here, um, if you want to do a really deep dive into your attachment style, knowing what love style you have, um, knowing how to actually have a massive breakthrough in your relationships, we have a, an introductory attachment style course that covers everything you need to know about attachment styles. And you can grab that using the link down below. And it's actually free for 14 days. For the month of February, we are doing a free 14-day trial. And this is because February is Valentine's Day month. And so you can really do a deep dive into all of our courses in there. Um, and this includes courses like 
checking out your needs and learning what your relationship needs are in our needs course or checking in with your communication patterns and how to improve them. And again, you can check them all out for free for 14 days. Um, and you know, each course is designed to guarantee that you have at least one major breakthrough that will change the trajectory of your relationships. And each course is only about an hour and a half long. So it's designed to give you a breakthrough really fast. So anyways, um, point number three here. Usually avoidant attachment styles tend to assume that their needs won't be met. Why? Because usually avoidant people in, in terms of their love style or attachment style growing up really didn't get their needs met the way that they needed. They, they might have had to sort of like meet their parents' needs or, um, you know, sort of fall into place or, you know, obey orders or just kind of, you know, go with the flow of things. But a lot of times they didn't feel like they could really communicate their individual needs or they didn't feel like their needs were understood. And this is so common for people in their childhood, but securely attached styles, the, the love styles that are most likely to really thrive in relationships, they usually had a completely different experience when it came to their needs growing up. Number four, feeling unable to articulate your feelings. Emotional literacy is a big deal if we want our relationships to succeed. If we don't know what we're feeling, if we don't know how to describe our feelings or get in touch with them, it's impossible to communicate them to others. If I don't know, for example, that it makes me feel frustrated if somebody's not listening to a boundary that I have, if I don't know how to articulate that in a kind way, if I'm just experiencing the frustration and I'm just in it, then I'm going to end up dealing with it in an unhealthy way. Like it's going to come out in some kind of other form if it doesn't come out through healthy articulation. And so, you know, maybe somebody violates a boundary and I yell at them or I wave my arms around or I get really mad. But if I knew that something just didn't feel good and I knew how to appropriately address that, you can guarantee that it avoids all this unnecessary conflict in relationships. So if I can just say, hey, you might not have noticed, but for me, X, Y, Z is a boundary and I just need you to be mindful of that going forward then I feel safe because I can protect my own boundaries. I feel like I can speak up about things that don't feel good. If I don't know how to say these things, I don't know what my boundaries are. I don't know how to say my feelings or understand what's going on inside of me. Lacking emotional literacy will always make relationships an uphill battle. So it's really important to pay attention to that. And last but not least, trying to speak with actions instead of words. A lot of avoidant attachment styles try to show that they're upset rather than say that they're upset and what they're upset about. And it leaves your partner having to read your mind. And then when they don't do a good job, you usually go back into pulling away further. And so again, it keeps this cycle of feeling upset, frustrated, then you know, trying to speak with your actions by pushing people away instead of communicating, which is actually what's necessary to resolve problems and grow together in relationships instead of growing apart. So if you want to do a deeper dive into really mastering relationships, each of our courses, we literally guarantee on that topic, a massive breakthrough at the end of the course that will change the way that you see your needs, your relationships, communication, your boundaries. Like we literally guarantee that where we offer a full money back guarantee. So um, please check it out. I mean, it's free for 14 days if you want to take a further look. And again, that link is down below. Thank you for watching. If you're enjoying this content, I make daily videos here on relationships, on the subconscious mind, on communication, um, on all these different things that affect this area of our lives. So please consider subscribing and I will see you in future videos.